Upon departure of Japan, we had to tell the airline where we were leaving to after Taiwan. So we decided on Singapore because US citizens can stay there for up to 90 days and it's very centrally located. As you know, our Airbnb turned out to be a scam, which if you're gonna stay there, make sure that you stay in a homestay. Singapore is one of the most diverse and beautiful cities that you'll go to. It has many tree-lined streets, a lot of parks, and a lot of the buildings and architecture fuse the ecological diversity with the architecture. So we saw plenty of trees in architecture, which was very interesting. And it kind of has a colonial style. There's a great mix of cultures and religions in Singapore. There's also a predominance of the Chinese culture. There's 74% Chinese Singaporeans. And if you're wondering about that swastika symbol, it's a symbol of Buddhism. The rest are a mix of expats, people that are coming over to work, import labor, domestic help, things of that nature. There's about 33% Buddhist and 18% Christian. The rest are either no religion, Islam, Taoism, or Hindu. Since we were waiting for our Airbnb to call us back and to pick us up, we decided that we would go to the National Museum, which is was really eye-opening for all the history of Singapore. We could have spent the whole day at the National Museum. There were so many things to see. There's three levels and three buildings. Team Lab Borderless teamed up to create kind of a wildlife exhibit in the glass rotunda and you walk around it, which is really neat. So it's very interactive and has that team borderless digital effect. We took a break to eat a sandwich and have some weird chocolate drink at the museum cafe. And we gave Anna a little time to do a little bit of coloring, which she really enjoyed with Frankie. There was some Sanskrit and some different things that the British discovered when they arrived in Singapore and at Fort Canning one of the ancient shrines is still preserved for one of the first chieftains and kings of Singapore. There were signs up everywhere for no durian allowed. It's a fruit that is supposed to boost immunity and other health benefits but it smells and tastes like rotting flesh. The most eye-opening exhibits was the Japanese occupation during World War II. Singaporeans were subjected to massacre, their food was in short supply, they were given rations, and overall just oppressed in many different ways. Anna was getting pretty cranky, so it was time for us to leave. Okay, so we are on our way back to our hotel where we have been staying for the past night. We're headed to Malaysia because of our new plans. And we just got a SIM card so that we can have data. So Singtel is the carrier and it was about 15 Singapore dollars. So we're gonna see how it worked out. We were a little worried because the data didn't work immediately, but you gotta wait a few minutes before it works. So. Lots of update on uh booking three nights or three different places in one night and also got a new camera. At our new hotel there were many different places to eat and there were things called hawker centers in Singapore that you could go to. Frankie ended up going to one of these centers getting us some chicken and then they also had some bread called roti which is really good, very tasty, kind of like nan bread and I could eat it all day long. So if you ended up watching our Airbnb scam video, you will know that we ended up going to Malaysia after Singapore. We had to cross the border, which took about an hour. We ended up getting a taxi that is specialized in that service because you have to have a dual passport to be able to get across the Singapore border or be approved. Maybe more on that later in the next video for Malaysia, which we have truly enjoyed much more time in Malaysia. Thank you for watching our video on Singapore and we wish that we could come back like I said, but maybe next time.